like that. Look a bit of everything else. Like that. Yeah, you just you also like spray it on a piece of cardboard and take a little. But, but uh, I've never seen one, but I've seen the pictures. I said this is a. day upstate new york fossil collecting oh just one word before we get started on the trip if you like fossil hunting and collecting videos please go ahead and subscribe subscribing doesn't cost anything but it makes fossil videos show up more often on the youtube feed i like fossil videos i hope you do too so please go ahead and maybe give me a thumbs up if you like it and definitely hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy this fossil hunting trip. Hi, welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. We are up in beautiful upstate New York on the campus of a university, which has very graciously allowed us to collect fossils. Up in this beautiful area, there is an exposure of Devonian rock. You can see some of my friends behind me. We're already working on the spot. We're gonna be looking for well, whole range of Devonian stuff, a lot of gastropods and trilobites, particularly Deplora trilobites are found here, usually in large quantities, quite deplorable, <laughs> actually quite enjoyable. We're looking forward to finding, hopefully finding a lot of nice fossils. So we'll see how the day goes. Okay, so today Abby has found a nice gastropod. This site is very good for gastropods, but it, uh, in this case, we're actually seeing the external shell. We're getting a lot of internal casts. So that is a nice find. You could probably figure out what species it is because you have the external casts there. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you very much for showing us that. Of course. And if, you, if they're really lucky, you'll pay them in fossils. That's it, yeah. yeah. Probably not, though. Not, not good fossils. Oh. And I'm sorry, could you say that thing about the 12 middle schoolers again? Because <laughs> it, I got it working now properly. Oh, okay. Well, Chris, if you could do me a favor, and because uh, this is this is too hard for an old man, I could use 12 middle school kids for up to a dollar an hour to help me. Each. Do oh, yeah. That's each, yes. Then let's make no mistake it's, about it's that. It's better than a dollar a pound, too. That's right. It's, it's moving at a glacial pace. Yeah. Well, there's a little old gastropod. It's ah. still recording. Not very a, nice. Not yes. a very good one. Internal but, cast. Right. Is that what there is here, mainly internal cast? Yes, although not always. Just uh, Abby right up there just uh -oh, found an external. A, very nice. Not a bad ammonite. Oh, yeah, look at that. A cord cephalopod, whichever it is. And another. Oh, yeah. That's pretty decent. Yeah. I wasn't looking for decent, but, uh, <laughs> but, but I'm, I think I'm going to have to accept it. <laughs> it's better than being decent. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, sure. Thanks for taking it. All right. And now we're into collecting. And now we just discovered that we are locked in. <laughs> because of after specific directions not to lock the gate. Somebody has done so. Glad I'm not the field trip leader this time. <laughs> My mechanic said he's never seen anybody bend struts the way I do. And does he know why? Yeah. Oh yeah, I always give him a fossil. Okay. So let's, here we have the unveiling after 300 and maybe 60 or 80 million years. And the old man having to depend on the kindness of strangers. Yeah. 
because there were no middle schoolers available <laughs> to help with the rock. <laughs> Oh, let's see, we got any treasures. Oh, shoot. There's the head of a big. Yes, yes, it deplora, is. But that's. Well, let's see if the rest of it is. That's a there. negative. Yep, so you have a negative there. So let's think the positive. Like <laughs> Gastropod. Yep, more of those little curly ones. Yeah. Here, I'm going to grab it for you. Oh, uh, that's why I was just sticking with it. Huh? Keep that one if, you, if you'd like it. Uh, you'll probably get better, but you never know. See, but we're looking for the... The big trilobite. Big, there he is, right here. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, you know something? That's, uh, the, uh, I think the yeah. head popped out somewhere. Well, that looks like uh, the head... I got two negatives, basically. You know, and the head popped out. But anyway, I don't care. Well, it also looks like it might be curled into the rock. Is there a possibility of that? Oh, now, now that I look at it from this angle, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you may be right. Yep, it looks like just a negative, but now, now I'm looking at it. There's, there's more to it. So. Yeah. Okay, we're collecting in a quarry in Hamilton, New York, and uh, Mr. Marados has uh, just found what may be a plant. It's it's certainly neat. Very unusual. If you can see it, it's quite small. Let's see. Hope we get in the shade now. Am I am I shading it? Yep. How's that? Quite small well, there. I can always put a photograph of it on there. All right, yeah. Yeah, so we're not sure what this is. It could be a bryozoan. It also has a very plant-like structure to it. So it's not always the giant trial bites that we're looking for. Sometimes it's just unusual stuff that we can find here. In the mid-Devonian, we're not really... Yeah, there is a possibility that it could be something that's much less understood. One that uh, none of us has seen. So yes. That's neat. So, we are on a golf driving range. Collecting fossils. In beautiful upstate New York. So let's talk a little bit about where we are. As you can see from this geologic map, we are in some bedrock geology that is from the Devonian period. The green and the blue and the purple are all Devonian rock. This rock was set down when the entire area was part of a shallow sea. If you look at the map over here, where we are in the western part of New York State, was all part of a shallow ocean, which laid down a lot of Devonian sandstone, shales, and limestones. We're in sort of a sandstone right now, which is part of the Panther Mountain Formation. So here we are on the purplish colored materials on this map, which is, indicates that where we are right now is in the Panther Mountain Formation. The, the Panther Mountain Formation is one that actually extends quite a bit of time. It goes through a good part of the Middle Devonian. Other formations have come and gone while this one was forming, but the Panther their mountain formation for quite a long time, so it has a large presence in the Middle Devonian. The creatures that we will be finding are all from the Middle Devonian Sea. And we've been here, oh, maybe, maybe half an hour or less, already making some finds. I just want to show you what I pulled out a minute or two ago. This rock here, has a lot of trilobite pieces and some gastropod internal preservation and I hope I pronounce this right a mastraca a early variety of cretacean so a couple of really interesting things on this one piece does anybody over here have anything they'd like to show ah so these are your finds some of which we just, we couldn't, it was so dirty that and wet. We are like, put them in the sun so that we can see what they are. Yeah. So also, you have a lot of really nice gastropods. If you don't mess with them too much, they'll probably stay together. And uh, 
Yes, yeah, so they are they are nice. This big piece have something or is that one to take home and work on? I don't. Have a nice bivalve, it looks like. A few nice, nice things here. Have you find, found anything trilobitish yet? No. All right, I've been giving away a few pieces. I haven't found a full one myself, but okay. I'll keep you in mind. Keep me in mind. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Lots of gastropods, but I mean, they're in here. I'm going to have to separate them very carefully. Okay. Interesting find? Yeah. Well, so, Okay, okay. Oh, you sure do. Very nice trilobite head there. And you? I need an interpretation of how the anatomy works here. Okay. <laughs> These fit together. Yep. Opened up like this. Yep. Now this is... That is a pleura or part of the... Connected to this, I believe. Oh. Is that a joint there? To this structure going off. The yeah, curve. you know, it looks like it's parts of a disarticulated trunk bite. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Yep. What part are we looking at? Both parts of its back. Parts of its back look like. So it this came is apart. the top crust of the loaf of bread. And the loaf is going this way? Yes. And the head's over here. It, yes, somewhere. Unless it's it, over here. Or unless it's <laughs> detached and who knows where. So these arch across the back. Yes. Yep, they, they call Plura. They, they arch across the back. Any interesting finds over here? Oh, yes. Looks like that trilobite was sneaking up on that gastropod. <laughs> oh, you have another gastropod over there. You see that one too? No, yeah, sorry, that's, that's the one. Pod. That's the one I was trying to get to. And this whole piece yeah. slip it off. Good find, good find, John. Yes. Oh yeah, you got a trail bite in there. You part of one. Let's hope there's more. I'm hoping. Wrapped around there, so. Yep. You got a nice thorax. Some nice gastropods and cephalopods. Is that the Richterin guy that you're talking about? Yeah. Can I put you in our vlog as well? Sure. Uh, what's yeah. your name? Tom. Hi, Tom. Thank you. Thank you very much for showing us that. Hey, it's fun. Fun? I think I found a trilobite head. You sure did. Nice. You've got a, uh, a cephalon or the head part of a trilobite. Awesome. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, nice cephalopod. Nice long stretchy cephalopod there. So we're making some good finds. Yeah, there. it seems like everybody... Uh, it all it all is hitting at the same time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Yeah. Okay. Look, look, here's the cross section. Oh, you got more of it, yes. In the same piece. So it's and you can see it coming through here. That's a continuation of the that's a launch. That, that, that's the tail. It's part of the pigidium yeah. there. And this must be the body going longitudinally here. Alright, so yes, you have a, a bunch of very nice gastropods and some bivalves. Put that very big one. It looks like they're holding together pretty well. They very often pull apart, so that's yeah. that's good. That's good. I'm looking for that trilobite. <laughs> <Same here>. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we seem to be finding a lot. So indeed. Yes. So it's a matter of a lot, more, a lot of surface area. The more stuff you rip out, the more likely you ought to find something. Right. I think trilobite heads right there. Is that that's part of, of a trilobite. Yes. And this one too. That's yep. the right side of the head. Yes, it is. It, yep, yep. You, so you do have some trail bike parts there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, the nose part. Um, <laughs> Glabella? Ray, yeah, Glabella. That's, that's a cheek term, right? That's the side. The cheek, Glabella. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much for. Oh, I'm sorry, no, the Glabella, that's the center part. Oh, Glabella. that is the center part. So the center okay. part, yes. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Any fine you'd like to show off? Those were her those are mine. Oh, those yours. Okay, would you like to be in our vlog too? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. This thing here. Oops. Very. Right. And you, Richard, right? Oh, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for reach. showing us this, Richard. And yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a nice little bivalve there. Not bivalve. Brocky bivalve. Mm -hmm. Brocky mm -hmm. there.
how does something fossilize? Most things don't. It's actually very rare that something actually does survive the test of time. Something actually gets preserved and becomes a longtime member of the fossil record. Let's take a look how the process of fossilization occurs. Fossilization is more likely to occur in aquatic environments, places where the water is depositing more materials and there are a lot of isotopes, these atoms floating around in the water that could help to preserve the creatures. Here we're seeing a trilobite living at the bottom of the water and it lives its life. Now trilobites, like many arthropods, might shed their shells and the shells can fossilize or they might die. And when they die or leave their shells behind, eventually this be becomes covered by more layers of sediment. Eventually it gets buried. Over time, we might see more and more layers being deposited on top of the fossil. Later, groundwater seeps into the rocks. Water moves through all the little pores and spaces within rocks very gradually. So over time, you might get a buildup of water or a water table within the rock. After this occurs, Isotopes, or little atoms that make up different materials, which are dissolved in the water, can seep into the fossils. Some of these dissolved isotopes include calcium, silica, which makes up a lot of our rocks, little bits of iron, and other isotopes might be in the water. Well, these isotopes, or atoms, will seep into the pores of the fossil. Over time, as the shell or the fossil is buried, it will start to break down. Groundwater will cause some of the original materials to seep away, a lot of the organic or carbon-based materials will eventually break down. But isotopes, which are just the atoms of different substances, which are dissolved in the water, may settle into the parts of the fossil that is dissolving. Calcium and silica, sometimes iron, and other isotopes that are dissolved in the water may start to fill in the pores of the dissolved parts of the creature, making a fossil. The end result is you get a complete copy, and it is because it's done on a molecular or atom scale, you get very close copies or very identical copies of the original material, only it's now in stone instead of organic matter. The end result is a stone fossil. If there is uplift, if the land which used to be underwater is now above water, the land will eventually start to break down again. Above water, things tend to weather away. Below water, things tend to be deposited. So when it's above water, it starts to weather away and the fossil will soon become exposed at the surface. If the fossil's lucky, or more likely if a person is really lucky, they might spot the fossil as it weathers out on the ground or identify the location as a place more fossils can be found if you dig in through the layers uh, which are exposed. Sometimes, these layers are mapped out by paleontologists and other fossil enthusiasts, and it gives us a good idea of what fossils can be found in particular locations that have stones from particular ages. Most fossilization occurs in the water. That's why we see so many species of invertebrates and sea creatures preserved so well, whereas things preserved on land are more of a rarity. If we look on the ground, over here, we see some natural sorting. The wave action moving larger objects with stronger waves and letting the finer sand settle out under weaker or lower energy conditions separates the items on the beach into different sizes and shapes. Very often, this natural sorting occurs uh, with seashells as well. Here we can see hundreds or thousands or millions of seashells on the beach. So what is it needed for fossilization to occur? 
Well, the organism has to die, and then very often it has to be followed by rapid burial. So for an example here, I dug a hole, and I'm gonna bury a bunch of these shells. Now, these shells are pretty strong. They're made with calcium carbonate. They're pretty strong shells. So that kind of increases their chances of fossilizing. Plant, Probably not quite so much. Doesn't have very many hard parts. So, probably won't fossilize. Let's have this crab shell. Oops, got away. Have this crab shell. And another, oh, another little weaker shell there. So I don't know if it's aragonite or some other, or chitin or some other calcium-based material, but it's weaker. So chances are it may not fossilize as well as those shells. We'll just have to see what happens though. So we're gonna have the rapid burial. And in a perfect world, they would have a very good chance of fossilizing. Now I say in a perfect world because where we are, we're at a beach. This beach has a lot of activity and chances are it's gonna get dug up and moved around by the ocean. Storms and changes in the tides and movement of sand will very likely disturb these shells again before they get a chance to fossilize. But if they're really, really lucky, they could become fossils. So it's turning out to be another great fossil collecting day. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was a nice one in it. Well, it looks like you still have the pieces. Not all. It was pretty nice. Big. Yes. And I just thought that was pretty. Oh yes. It Isn't sure it pretty? Is. Would it be okay if you gave us your first name for a video? Susan. Susan, thank you. Thank you very much, Susan. And look at that. Isn't that interesting? Sure. It, that, it looks like a, a bivalve that's been yeah. eroded by sponges. They very often sponges. Oh, sponges? Grab onto those on the seafloor and, and start degrading them. And this one. Oh, you... that's one in much better shape. Yeah. Another, uh, looks like, I'm thinking a bivalve probably. Good. Nice head. Yes, it is. Awesome. Thank you. My wife didn't even beg to pick me off. You were right there, you know. And the two kids, they found some fish, but they'd already been told by the mother and basically the grandmother that they weren't going to like it. Looks like you guys are digging a mine. Yeah. <laughs> we, got the, we got the big boy here, but so far we're not finding the big trailer bite. Uh -huh. Here's a partial here. Here's a... Here's yep, oh yeah. Four of one. But. Well, that's a good sign. If you're finding those, at least you know they were living in those waters. Okay. It's not, that's very encouraging, isn't it? Because you sound like you're talking to a middle school kid or something. <laughs> But, that, but once again, that's a problem. We need the young people have all the luck. <laughs> you get the eyes and you get the luck. Yeah. Beginners have the luck. Just, yes. Just, <laughs> yeah. And vision. You know, having that young vision also helps too. It's amazing. Yes. Yes. And he picked up a he kicked a rock by accident and it laid open a beautiful the best uh, fossil of the of the day. Both sides of a leaf. And he says, Is this yours? And I said, No. <laughs> I never never saw it. Susan has found 
a pagidium, which is a trilobite tail, and a trilobite head together. I would say that these are definitely different creatures because look how small that head is mm -hmm. and the look how wide the tail is there. But I don't think that's the whole head, do you? Um, it's most of it, I would think. Hmm. I mean, that's just my guess. I, you know, yeah, I wasn't there, so yeah, I don't yeah. know for sure. I couldn't find anything else. Because it's broke well, here. And I, I, no, you can see some lines there. Yeah, you're yes. probably right. You can see, so, there might yeah. be more of this one inside the rock. Even if you get in the surrounding rock, for some reason it doesn't seem to affect that much. But Please lay them outside for a while and the thing suddenly is laying on the picnic table. You know? <laughs> so how did you like your first time actually fossil collecting? It was, it was awesome. I didn't realize how hard it would be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Physically. It is a lot of work. <laughs> First hour I was gung ho. Second hour I was like, oh, okay. I'm, I, I'm, I'm almost I'm, Take it easy. I'm fairly confident that's a, a Malacostraca. Uh, and so you can take this piece out and glue it in here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's neat. Let me get a picture yeah, of that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll hold it. And you, you haven't seen the uh, book, I guess, that they got. But, but uh, I've never seen one, but I've seen the pictures in the I book. I said, this is a. This is sticking it, out of this thing. And this is a tail, and it, and yeah. wow. it, pro it probably yeah, came to a fork at the back. end, which I don't uh, <laughs> That is amazing. Holy cow. Yeah, look the, super rare. Even, even, super that, rare even that end is pretty pretty neat. Yeah, look it up uh, when you get home. You you got the book, do you? No, uh, Ray has the book. Oh, okay. Well, when you when you we get back to the truck or whatever, take another look at that because i'm almost positive that's what he's got so that's that's neat that's a cool. yes that is that is a little bit yeah. off the tail here and a little bit off the wood one oh there. you gotta we'll call that the first complete one of the day <laughs> all right so what we're looking at right here is it looks like i did find a trilobite although it is a badly weathered one so it looks like the head, the head might be curled into here a very badly weathered body back here and the worm actually crawled underneath it, so I know it's pretty much destroyed. But um, yeah, at least, at least there is a trilobite here. All right, so it's always a matter of surface area, how much you move to get to the fossils. It looks like we have a bunch of layers that are gonna fall out of points over here. It'll be a mess, but worth going through. You want me to film? Yeah. <laughs> I did film it. <laughs> ah, big cephalopod. It's a nice little find. Now the cephalopod. And this is why we move a whole lot at once whenever we can, because inside that big pile that got pushed down was a pretty nice trilobite head. Who knows, maybe some more of that trilobite's in there. So here's Dennis's trilobite. We're kind of hoping it's enrolled. I'm always hopeful. So it's in this rock over here. I think he's leaning towards sawing it out. So this may be cut out. Should be a good trilobite though. It's already a good head. I'm allergic to dust. Uh oh. You picked the wrong profession then. Mm -hmm. So we're talking with Mike. Mike has found something. Mike has a trilobite head sticking out of the rock. Let's see if it looks like more. It's hard to see. I'd say more than a 50% chance is more there. More than 50% chance. Cute little trilobite trying to hide in the rock over there. And all I got to use. Pardon me. Yes. That shouldn't be too bad. Where did you go? 
Uh, far away from it. Go take this out down here, weaken that over there. See if it lifts up. You might, Dennis has a saw. If you wanna think, uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Think you might need a saw, you can try that. Upwards and break it. Okay. You think we're back here? Yeah. See if you can get the side. Maybe some of that overburden in the corner. You know, the uh, just let's take this away and then the rest will come up easier. And yeah, it's only a little bit. That's the idea. Just dig off, you break all that out, and then you can lift the whole thing up maybe much more easily. The sun is setting. It is time to stop fossil collecting. So we get ready to look. go. The sky is blue. Do you know what the birdies do? <laughs> they do. Well, everybody have a good time? Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. A little why, bit ago. why do we have four cars and three people? <laughs> oh. Oh, he's in his car. <laughs> 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 I'm standing here, and I'm looking and I'm saying, well, we can have a special sale. What's wrong with, what's wrong with this picture? Oh, didn't you hear that bear I coming too far before? Here. I actually drove two cars here. So now we're back, and I'd like to show you some of the things that I found. Well, I'd like to start off with this guy, a nice little trial bite. You can see it's not just the head, but more of the body's actually crawled around into this. You can see a little bit on the bottom here. None of these fossils are prepared yet. They're cleaned off a little bit, but none of them have been cut down into more manageable sizes. I'm gonna do that um, a little bit later on. Here, seeing very unusual preservation of a gastropod. Usually you see them on the side or you can see curled up things. Here, we get the central portion of this gastropod. I think it's an internal cast and the shell actually spreads out on the bottom to making a wide disc around it. So it's a very nice three-dimensional preservation of an internal cast of a gastropod or a snail. Over here we have another nice little trilobite or trilobite head. That's better than nothing. So we found that. And I have a large trilobite head over here. Now this trilobite head it also has some pleura or some of the back on the side over here. I think it's probably part of the same one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a knife or something in here and try and pry it apart and see if there's more of this trilobite besides just the head, which is showing. It's also, there's a crack in it, so I have to be very careful not to damage it further. We have, looks like back segments here, which may be the same trilobite. I'll take that apart in a minute or two and we'll see if that's there's more there. You may remember from the site I found when that big chunk of wall came down I a nice cephalopod popped out. Well here's that cephalopod or squid-like creature. Here is a smaller one that was also found. These are the little bimbixia, the snails that are very common in that area. Most of these are internal casts although I have a couple of nice external casts preserved outside which uh, I'll also show you. And we have a couple of nice, delicate little brachiopods over here. We have a really nice little snail over here. What we're looking at here is a bivalve. Very nice example. I believe this is the upper lid part that would be facing towards the surface where it uh of the sediments that it had submerged itself in but it's a uh a very nicely well preserved bivalve and finally do you remember that really fine bryozoan the, can you see those little branch like things inside the shell here so we're really tiny delicate little creatures in there i think they're bryozoan i'll have to find out more about it but uh Unusual to find such a nice, delicate little fossil 
in those uh, outcrops there. As I mentioned, I'm going to try and split this open and see if there's more of this trilobite hiding under here. If there is a crack over here, so I have to be very careful, avoid breaking that further. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to my kids. Three of my children had helped me out with this. Becky bought me safety goggles. Thank you for thinking about me, Becky. Donald bought me headphones so I won't blast you out with the background music because now I can hear what these videos sound like. Thank you to uh, my subscribers for also letting me know that the music was a little too loud. And finally, thank you to Katie for buying the light, which is actually helping to illuminate what we're filming right now. And thank you to her for filming as well. And without more ado, let's see if there's more trilobite hiding underneath this. I usually don't do this in the dining room, but being that we're filming, there's a crack that I don't want to open, but I do have this popping up. Oh, oh. All right, it popped up. It's popping right through the head of the trilobite. Not really what I wanted. I don't see anything really good under here. Don't see any more of the trilobite hiding under there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue that back together where I broke it because it was better off intact. So that's a little repair job, but I really had to check to see if there was any more of that trilobite in the rock. The only way to find out is to look inside the rock. All right, just two more things I want to show you to wrap this up. I almost forgot to show you two really good pieces. So this one has a trilobite head. Uh, the trilobite head is really well preserved. You can actually see the lower part of the cephalon over here. That part usually breaks off and there's more of it underneath. So I'll have to very carefully dig under here to get that out. And these ones are these fossils have not really been prepared yet. This is just kind of a showing of what we found at the site. The other thing that's really interesting is this piece over here, which does have a lot going on. We have a trilobite head over here. Okay, some more trilobite pieces here and there. A gastropod, brachiopod, another part of a trilobite head, another gastropod. So a lot going on on this rock, but what the most important thing that's going on is the part of the phylocarid over here, one of those rare shrimp. So we have this shell, you know, there are two sides to these uh, phylocarids, but the shell is over here. Who knows if I dig, I might find some little more of the phylocarid here, but a fairly unusual find on a rock that has a bunch of other pretty much the whole range of little Devonian fossils from the site. Everything but cephalopods on this one rock. So very nice little rock, definitely a keeper. Thank you very much.